on this episode of United. From UCF to NFL stardom, we'll see what the road to playing on Sundays is really like. How to fuel up right, we'll give you some tips on having a proper diet. And get out your water bottles, we show you how to stay hydrated in our fitness focus. United starts now. Okay, back here to United, Scott Adams with you as we're going to take some time now to hear from both Mike Walker and Darcy Johnson, two former greats there on the UCF football field as they tell us a little bit about how their playing days for the UCF Knights paved their way into the National Football League. The scouting process entering the draft is, is crazy. Um, from the training to the type of questions they ask you, from what they know already that you didn't even know they knew to them going into your school, asking your coaches about you. It's, it's a lot, man. They know every single thing about you. Making it to the, the next stuff in the NFL, a lot got to go into it. You got to, you got to live, eat, sleep, football. It's not as easy as you think. Don't think you're just going to go and do three years in college and ball out and then just go to the NFL. No, it's not going to be easy. You got to respect your coaches. You got to respect everybody around you. You got to be a good person because, you know, just, just as much as NFL likes you, they're going to talk to your coaches first. Because a lot of times, you know, those coaches that you coach probably coach or coach with some of those guys in NFL. Coach O'Leary came in and, I mean, he gave, you know, I, I consider tough love, you know. He just helped me grow as a man, you know what I'm saying? Not when, just show me when everything don't go your way, you still got to react with professionalism and, and, and as a man. I mean, I think the main part is when you send a goal to go to the NFL at school, I mean, it doesn't matter if you had a grade. That's the main thing. A lot of, I, know, I know a lot of people who had a lot of talent. I grew up with a lot of people who was way better than me, a lot faster, a lot stronger, a lot bigger. I mean, it's a lot of misconceptions, but the, the one I have a problem with, I mean, people can talk about money and all that other stuff. The problem I have with, you know, a lot of people look at a football player and think they're dumb, you know what I mean? You got to be very, very smart to be a football player. You know, people will be in the real estate business, marketing, just a lot of different things they, 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 they dip into. You know, you can tell that these guys have degrees and you know what to do with them. Not everybody going to be pro athlete. And um, I'm not saying that to knock their dreams because if they want to be an athlete, they want to be a pro athlete, I'm going to always tell a kid, well, you work hard to be a pro athlete. I'm never going to, you know, try to tarnish or try to scare them and to not do what they want to do. But I, I am going to raise awareness with them and let them know that they have a backup plan. Like I had a knee injury. I never knew my knee was, was going to be 100% healthy or not. Having that criminal justice degree gives you that security in your back pocket that just in case, you know, I, I might mess my knee up again or it doesn't get back to normal. I always had that degree to fall back on it, so therefore I would have be able to get a decent job. It could have been, you know, I could have gotten the NFL one year and it been over. It. I just put it all into, you know, trying to make it to the NFL. And if it didn't work out, you know, go look for a job. I mean, it's the same thing. You get interviewed, you know. Flex, plus two and a half, 17. You got orientation, which is the combine or whatever. And you get hired, which is draft day. And you go to work, you wake up every day. I wake up probably 6 o'clock every morning during the season, if not early. And I might leave the stadium at 5.30 at the earliest. And it's just like that. It's more. It's probably more work than a regular job. It's a high, high risk, high reward job. And, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't trade it right now because I'm doing something, I'm playing a game that I love. And that's what I got. That's what I asked for, that's what I dreamed for, and that's what I got. Now, I'm going to take the next step. 
There was Mike Walker and Darcy Johnson, two former UCF Knight players now in the National Football League. And when we come back here on United, we bring back Darcy Johnson to learn a little bit more about his way into playing on Sundays. That up next here on United. Did you know that drinking 20 ounces of water or a sports drink two to three hours before exercise and about half as much 15 minutes before exercise will help to ensure your body avoids dehydration? Stay tuned to United's Fitness Focus later in the show. Hi, welcome back to United. Scott Adams with you. We're now joined by Super Bowl tight end Darcy Johnson, former UCF Knight, once donning the black and gold on Saturdays. Now the giant blue on Sundays, Darcy, as a guy that grew up in Palatka, Florida, population 10,000. Now up in Manhattan, 1.6 million uh, individuals living up there. But, but talk a little bit about your transition from coming to UCF and then to the National Football League. Um, it wasn't a very, very, you know, hard transition. Um, I think I had good tools from uh, Coach O'Leary them and get me ready to um, go to the next level. So, I mean, I don't, really don't find it, you know, much of a difference. No, it's more of a business atmosphere up there, though. Well, now a full-time job for Darcy Johnson, professional football player. Mm -hmm. Being a, a college athlete and having, you know, schooling as well as your obligations on the football field, it was balance that you needed to be able to have when you were a student athlete. And now that you are a professional athlete, talk a little bit about maybe how that played a part into what you're doing now. That, that had a, a big deal, you know what I mean? Just work habits, you know what I mean? Being accountable. Uh, I'm married now, so I got to be accountable to her and uh, just take care of my responsibilities. And uh, I had to go from, you know, a young man to a man. So um, this experience, you know, helped me out uh, tremendously. So now suiting up on Sundays there in the National Football League, people always uh, are, are curious what it's like to be able to run through that tunnel in East Rutherford Stadium in any NFL stadium. What's that been like for you? A dream come true. Uh, I was just wanting this my whole life and uh, just to get the opportunity to go out there and look up and see the fans and hear people saying Darcy Johnson. I mean, just a dream come true. I just thank God every day for it. Darcy, undrafted free agent, your first game in the National Football League back in 2006, suiting up against the Washington Redskins. Give me, give me a little bit about what was going through your mind prior to that game getting underway. First of all, you know, I got a call on Christmas Day to be moved up to the uh, varsity team and uh, from practice squad, so. Uh, Best Christmas present of all time. I mean, <laughs> I was happy, man, and uh, I did look at it as the best Christmas present of all time. But uh, first game, watching the Redskins do or die game to get into the playoffs, um, and uh, they moved me up, and I thought I was just gonna go stay on the sideline, be behind the tight ends, and don't do nothing, and stay under the radar. But uh, they threw me in. They threw me in on offense, and uh, I uh, ran a couple of routes. I didn't catch no balls, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> I blocked for uh, Tiki Barber, you know, team rushing record right now that still stands. So uh, I felt good. You know, I, I got an opportunity and I made the most of it. And uh, I was just proud of the fact that I was part of history with Tiki on his uh, last game as a Giant. Darcy, only eight individuals out of 10,000 high school football players will end up into the National Football League. Talk a little bit about your dedication, your work ethic, uh, and to getting to where you are now today. Just a lot of hard work. Um, of course, I wasn't drafted. I was a free agent. So um, I knew going in that I had to work harder than the draft picks to get a chance to be on the team and to make a name for myself. You know, 32 teams passed over me. And uh, I just go out every day and try to prove them, you know, right and wrong in a sense. So uh, uh, I just go and work hard. A lot of dedication. You got uh, got to be committed, and you definitely can't be a quitter. And um, being at UCF, uh, had a chance to quit. A lot of people quit. I stuck with it, and uh, that experience is gonna help me forever. Of course, and UCF, there where gra or, uh, Darcy graduated, 2005, criminal justice major. As now you have both your skills on the football field as well as life skills to take beyond after that football career is done. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I grew up in a, you know. Uh, um, rural neighborhood, um, had a lot of friends now that uh, 
ain't having the chance and the opportunity to do what I'm doing. And I see, you know what I mean, what 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 that side of the bridge can uh, do for you. And um, I just want to go a different way and uh, help people to go a different way. So uh, that's why the criminal justice, you know, okay. mainly why I want to do that. All right, Darcy, final question here for you. Plenty of youth there, uh, out there, and, and one of the things that we'd like to ask some of our athletes is what's that one thing that you can go ahead and maybe instill into the minds of some kids today to be able to, to continue to work hard and get there? Uh, you might come to the next level like you have with the NFL. Um, I just, I just want to let the kids know that, um, first of all, you know, if you got a parent, you got a grandmother, uh, anybody that's uh, taking the time to bring you up and I mean everybody's not fortunate to have a mom and a dad so uh, when your, your elders talk to you listen okay. I mean that's the big thing you know I try to emphasize the kids is listening because listening just helps out tremendously and um, I mean most of the people that's taking care of you they're not gonna tell you anything wrong so you listen to them and uh, everybody got their own little way of telling you the right thing to do so uh, just listen all right, Darcy Johnson, number 84 for the New York Football Giants, a former UCF Knight. And uh, when we come back here on United, we'll have more. Stay right there. Before the break, it's time for our United trivia question. What temperature range does the National Athletic Trainers Association recommend water or sports drinks be kept at for drinking during exercise? Is it between 35 and 40 degrees? 40 and 50 degrees, 50 and 60 degrees, or 60 degrees and above? We'll have the answer in a moment. It's time for the answer to this episode's trivia question. What temperature range does the National Athletic Trainers Association recommend water or sports drinks be kept at for drinking during exercise? The answer is between 50 and 60 degrees. This is because fluid temperature influences the amount an athlete can drink to stay properly hydrated. A cool beverage is recommended over one that is ice cold. Hi, welcome back to United. I'm Stephen Helmkamp. Today we're getting more great tips on what it takes to have a proper nutrition, well-balanced diet. Today with me is Megan Van Camp. She's a licensed nutritionist here at UCF. Megan, do you see a lot of bad habits in the way people go about their diet nowadays? Well, I think we all have bad habits. Usually they are uh, centered around too much sugar, too many added fats. Um, but one of the things I see most common in people who are active or exercising more is that they overestimate how many calories they're burning when exercising and then underestimate how many calories are in some of our foods. So a lot of people are going to exercise for maybe an hour, burning three, 400 calories, but then saying that they deserve ice cream or they deserve um, cookies or a latte, and then they're exceeding the calories that they just burned. So what are some of like, the worst foods that you see these student athletes like after working out and going and eating? Well, I see a lot of athletes drink sweets especially late at night, and that usually is a signal that they're not eating enough healthy foods earlier in the day, and it makes them overeat sweet foods at night. So what are the best ways to eliminate eating these sweet foods and getting your healthy foods? Number one would be make sure that you have breakfast in the morning, eating a nice balanced breakfast of whole grains, fruit, and low-fat dairy within an hour of waking up, making sure you eat regularly throughout the day, not skipping meals. Um, and then, of course, having healthy alternatives around at nighttime, um, such as whole grain sweetened cereals, um, some low-fat uh, yogurts, um, some fruit, healthier things that you can eat at nighttime. What are your quick tips if you can't get to fresh foods? What, what do you eat? Like if you're in a high school cafeteria or? Well, that is difficult. You know, sometimes you don't have control about, uh, over what the foods that are offered to you. Um, what I would recommend is being prepared and at least bringing some fresh foods with you. So it doesn't mean you need to pack your whole lunch or you need to be prepared you know, to, with a full meal on but hand. just in case. But just in case, always have a piece of fruit in your bag um, or have at least a whole grain snack like a granola bar or some whole grain crackers so that you're still getting some um, good nutritious foods. Well, being that there's a lot of college students around, is fast food or fried food ever okay? Sure. We don't say no to any food. Basically, every food can fit in a healthy diet. It's just how much and how often. So, 
I always just recommend that an athlete improve upon what they're currently doing. Mm -hmm. So fried foods are not at the bottom of the pyramid, meaning we don't recommend it be a basis of your diet. So if you're used to eating out, um, eating fried foods or eating out at fast food restaurants four or five times a week, just try to cut it down to two or three, and that's going to be a big improvement. Megan, if you happen to wake up at like say two or three o'clock in the morning, what's the best source of food to eat at that particular time, healthy-wise? Well, for my student athletes, some of them do need to wake up in the middle of the night to eat because they are so active throughout the day and so busy throughout the day that they can't get the adequate amount of calories and protein. So for people that are not getting their adequate amount of calories and protein in through the day, I recommend that they have a healthy snack that has a little bit of carbohydrate and a little bit of protein. So an easy one would be a peanut butter banana sandwich. Um, that's when it, some of my athletes use a protein shake. Um, or you could do something like a trail mix or a bowl of cereal. So, but say like they are getting enough calories, enough carbohydrates, but some, sometimes you're still hungry like late at night. Yeah. Would you still want to do the carbs and the protein and stuff? That's when I would turn to during the day, looking at what you're eating. Because if you're still hungry at night, but you're getting adequate amount of calories, you might be missing out on some key nutrients that you're not getting. So it goes back to making sure that you're getting the right amount of fruits and vegetables and whole grain to satisfy the nutrients that you need. Well, great. Megan, thank you so much for coming by and talking with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching United. Stay tuned for more. Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. And it's on with sunset in this room. The dog shaved after you into a solitude. Play out New Orleans, take this blue. Welcome back to United, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about our fitness focus, which is hydration. Now, Judd, sitting here with you, you're the assistant athletics trainer for football. Why is hydration so important for a student athlete? Uh, biggest thing is just it allows you to perform at your highest level, um, along with a proper diet and, and many other things. But hydration is, is the key to being able to uh, perform at your highest level each time you step onto that playing field. Now, you talk about hydration, but there's also proper hydration. There's two differences there. Can you tell us why proper hydration is so important than just kind of taking a few sips of water here and there? Well, I think it's important for student athletes in one and, uh, and people that are just active in general, um, as opposed to just your normal average person that's not very active. They can be hydrated because they're not having to put their bodies uh, at these uh, exertional limits um, when they're when they're playing sports. Uh, so being properly hydrated as an athlete, um, you know, you're sweating more, uh, you're using more energy and things like that. So being properly hydrated is definitely um, a key for student athletes and athletes in general. Now you kind of hear the, the constant battle between, well, how about Powerade, you know, drink water, and they kind of go back and forth battle with that. Wait, what do you tell your athletes in terms of hydration, what they need to do, what they need to drink? You can't go wrong with water. Um, you know, water is definitely by far the, the best thing that's going to hydrate you. You know, Powerade is, is definitely a supplemental uh, drink that, you, that is uh, beneficial as well. Um, you know, Powerade and, and drinks like it um, contain electrolytes. Uh, and electrolytes basically just help uh, the rehydration process uh, kind of speed up a little bit. So it basically helps to get you um, rehydrated a little bit quicker. So having a combination of both is fine, um, but you can't go wrong with just water. Is there a better or more specific time of when uh, maybe an athlete can drink Powerade or maybe should drink Powerade? Typically, you know, two to three hours before competition or before they're going to be playing or practicing is a good time to do that. And then as you get a little bit closer to that, that playing time, you know, making sure that you drink enough water. Um, you know, typically with the Powerade drinks and things like that, um, you know, 17 to 20 ounces, so just a, a normal bottle of Powerade, and then, you know, a 16 to 20 ounce bottle of water, um, you know, maybe 20 to 30 minutes prior to activity. You don't just want to just drink water when you're thirsty or drink Powerade or any type of drink like that when you're thirsty. I mean, should you drink a lot of water the night before the game, pre-game, and, you know, during game, how much water should you be drinking? Uh, the thing that we preach to our athletes is pre-hydration. Um, you can't wake up in the morning um, or wake up in the afternoon or, or whatever and have that event and be able to, to think you're going to be hydrated just an hour before um, by drinking, drinking some water. The hydration process takes place 
many hours prior to, to your activity. Um, so, you know, our team, our football team, you know, we do most of our workouts in the morning. So we definitely preach to our guys that you need to drink um, the night before. That's when you're going to be hydrated for the next day. You know, if you try to drink when you're thirsty, when you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So that's definitely a sign of dehydration. Joe, that's a good point about hydration. How does a student athlete necessarily know when he, he or she is being dehydrated by a lack of fluids? Um, first sign is, is thirst. Um, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Um, so that's the important thing to make sure you're drinking throughout uh, the competition or the practice or whatever it may be to make sure that you stay hydrated the entire time. Uh, once you become thirsty, that's a definitely a first sign of uh, being dehydrated. Um, from there, dizziness, headaches, um, you know, kind of getting a little bit of uh, confusion going on. Um, and then obviously all those things can lead to heat cramps uh, and, and things worse than that as well. Now a lot of times you hear coaches that's kind of banning carbonated or caffeine products like soda, those type of things for an athlete because they say it decreases your performance. Is this true? Uh, it is true uh, in a sense. Caffeine is a diuretic so uh, it makes you urinate more which dehydrates you. Uh, it takes fluid out of your body um, and doesn't allow fluid to stay in. So I think that's the big thing that coaches probably pay attention to um, when kind of banning caffeine or, or carbonated drinks um, and the other thing is just the, the amount of sugar uh, that's present in them too. Uh, it doesn't allow for good absorption of water um, and uh, that's what you need to stay hydrated. Well Judd, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your time. I'm Michael Donald for United. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.